Dessert Trues, episode 38. I'm <laughs> having quite the time. Biocentrism kind of went south. Uh, your sister got pregnant. A dad beat her up. Um, you name it. Crazy stuff happened. So um, it looks like I am switching. <laughs> I tried. I switched back to um, uh, more quotes from the afterlife of Billy Fingers. But what happened <laughs> is it stopped. So <clears throat> I'm believing that there is another reason, and the third reason is that I'm supposed to go back to my necklace, like a good girl, find another hat, and talk about the untethered soul from my own journal. So, um, okay, so we're talking about the spirit and, uh, and the way that the spirit feels. If you ask the body, it says generally things like, you know, uncomfortable. <laughs> if you ask the psyche, it always complains and fears. Um, but when you um, ask the spirit, it always feels good. It always feels high, open, um, light. Uh, because, because of this, you never, you, you naturally begin to center more and more on the spirit. Um, part of your being, and you do this not by reaching for your spirit, but by letting go of the rest. Um, when you let go of the lower aspects of your being, you feel a tremendous love, um, the spirit of God, and you feel that. Uh, nothing could come in through the senses that was higher than what was already going on on the inside. So that means like not through your eyes, not through your nose, <laughs> not through your mouth, not any of your senses feeling um, could bring the kind of joy that um, you just feel without the five limited senses. Okay, so you drift your seat of consciousness higher and higher until one day you aren't there. No more sense of I. There was no more sense of separateness, experiencing the love and the light. There was only the ultimate expansiveness of the sense of self, merging into the love and light, like a single drop of water merging into the ocean. <laughs> um, which used to be my picture <laughs> for a long while. Um, when the drop of consciousness that knows itself as an individual drifts back far enough, um, it becomes the drop that falls into the ocean. Uh, the soul um, falls into the supreme soul, and the individual consciousness falls into the universal oneness. That's it. That's what happens. People say interesting things when this happens. <laughs> um, such as the things that Jesus said, like, I and my Father are one. And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but of the Father that dwells in me, who does the works. Well, we're a ray of sunlight. And when we stop identifying with the ray, we come to know ourselves as the sun. In the mystical gospel of John, Christ says that they all may be as one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may be perfect in one. Same in Hindu, or Vedas, or Jewish Kabbalah, or Sophie mystic poets, all the great religions. Um, such a state exists, and one can merge into the universal absolute. One can merge into God, ultimately being merged into the being, the big being. <laughs> um, and then seeing what happens to you. This is universal consciousness. The qualities of beings who have attained their deep state are similar in every religion. As you walk in love, beauty, appreciation, honoring, respecting, loving, cherishing, there's no more judging. <laughs> to differentiate is to judge, to see, to experience, and to honor is to participate in life instead of standing back and judging it. See people as if you're walking through a flower garden. You can only know God from the inside. As you drift into spirit, it comes from the actual experience. These transformations take place on their own. All you need to do is take notice of them. You'll begin to see the force of divine consciousness. Uh, the omnipresent, the omniscient, and the omnipotent. Or omnipotent. <laughs>
<laughs> that is aware of all things and all times equally. It is universally conscious. Hmm, what is it like to see through the eyes of God? Like how a mother does when she sees her child. <laughs> With all love, all joy, and that everything is beautiful. Completely protected, loved, honored, respected by divine force, and never judged. When the eyes of God sees through you, all pain, guilt, fear, shame, judgment just goes away. When the hand of God reaches out to give through you, there's nothing that you won't give. <laughs> you would give your last breath and not even think about it. This love comes through you. This is divine and unconditional love. Ah, yeah, it's so deep, it's transcendental. Transcendental love. No matter what you do and no matter what you've done, you'll always be loved by spirit. Like the story of the prodigal son, each time you return, a party is thrown for you. Do you wish to know how God looks upon this world? The sun shines the same on everyone. It doesn't shine more on saints. <laughs> it doesn't rain more water on the grass of your neighbor's <laughs> grass. <laughs> you can turn away for a hundred years um, and uh, live in the dark. But if you turn to the light, it is there. None of nature differentiates. None of God's creation passes judgment. Nature gives to whomever will receive. So you should make your divine plans by creating um, what it is that you desire um, and then see it as not only possible and real, but give thanks for it already. <laughs> uh, should you choose not to receive, it doesn't punish you. You punish yourself because you choose not to receive. Even if you denounce God, creation still continues to sustain you. You don't need to apologize. Come out of the dark and look up at the light. Still shining on you as if you never left. You, so you do just that. You do not let fear, guilt, shame, none of that interfere. That's just your ego blocking divine light and divine force and presence. You can't offend the Divine One. It's, its very nature is light, love, compassion, protection, giving. You can't make it stop loving you. It's like the sun. You can't make the sun stop shining on you. You can only choose not to look at it. The moment you look, you'll see it's there. The Divine One, light, nature. The moment you look, as you drift back into spirit, you'll see that those are the eyes that look upon this world. That is the heart that shines down upon everything and everyone. Through those eyes, even the most wretched of creatures looks beautiful. The saint sees that God goes into ecstasy when God looks upon this earth. Under all conditions and at all times, ecstasy is the only thing that God knows. God's nature is eternal, conscious bliss. No matter what you've done, you're not going to be the one that ruins it. When you experience God's ecstasy, you'll feel this joy. And then nobody will upset or disappoint you. Nothing will create a problem. It will all appear as part of the beautiful dance of creation unfolding before you in your natural state. Should we continue? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, well, here we are. It will get higher and higher, and you'll feel love instead of shame, instead of being unwilling to lift your eyes to the divine because of what you've said or done. You'll see the divine as a place of unconditional refuge. Love can only do love. Your God is in ecstasy. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> God feels ecstasy when he sees you. Yay! So there you have some spiritual divine nutrition. <laughs> May you be blessed. May you have pleasant dreams. Um, and kiss, kiss. <laughs> You're not going away. <laughs> Bye!